Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So I've got another sample here for my friends at Creative Palette. It's a theme working on here. I'm getting on my Creative Palette <laughs> um, wines taken care of. Um, so uh, my good friends, I wish they were my good friends. I really need to go see them. But I did get to go to their booth in Germany. Um, so my good friends from Michel Chapoutier. Uh, this is the Billa Haute uh, Lesquera. Uh, let's, let's get it. Oh, I said, I think I said it right. Um, so this is a, um, a red blend. Um, this is 2017. It, it suggested retail price is $28. If I remember correctly, $28. Um, so this is from an area, um, uh, in the, uh, Rousselon. Uh, and super, super close to Spain. And it's not really going to expand, will it? Show me where, where they're looking at. Um, anyway, um, so this area, uh, Lisqueda, is, let me find the little, um, the notes real quick on it. So, uh, blah, 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 blah. So it's so first of all the wine is primarily um, uh, Syrah, Grenache, and Carignan, uh, with some variations in percentages from one vintage to the next. Uh, they are harvested by hand on a 67-acre Lasqueta uh, vineyard. The name equates to escarpment in the local Catalan dialect, and the vines are anywhere from 40 to 60 years old. Um, let's see here. So the first vintage of this is 2008. Uh, Chapoutier bought the um, bought the um, property in 1999, um, and uh, or bought Billa Oat in 1999. And it, I totally forgot about this, but this was actually a um, the house of Billa uh, or Bia Bila um, was a refuge for the Knights Templar, which is why. There is a cross on the label. So the T of the Bill of is the cross. And I've seen the cross, I think the T is always a cross. But I think sometimes on the other labels, the cross is also featured elsewhere. Um, let's see here. Uh, they practice sustainable farming, which you know, it doesn't really explain what that means necessarily. Uh, low yields um, give you high quality fruit, um, hand harvested, and then uh, at least for this wine, and I think all their wines are. Um, let's see here. And juice is fermented in cement vats, uh, and the must is pumped over the cap periodically to improve skin contact after a long maceration of three to four weeks. The wine is racked from vat to vat, which naturally clarifies the wine. Um, so it sounds like they don't use any fining um, or filtration. And depending on the vintage, the wine is aged in lar large oak barrels, but usually less than 10% of the cuvee re receives its treatment. The wine is then carefully blended and aged prior to bottling. Uh, and there was no 2010 vintage due to hail damage in the vineyard. Um, let's see here. That's about it on the notes. Let's get into this. Love Syrah. All right, so unlike the white wines I was reviewing, this one at least has some characteristics on the nose I can pick up, but it's actually it's still also a little closed. But I get, you know, I get definitely some red fruits, a little black fruit, a touch of blue fruit. Um, honestly, it almost smells like a blueberry pancake. 
in syrup, almost. With like some cinnamon. I know that's really crazy and I think I'm probably throwing stuff in there because I, since I'm off tomorrow from work, I kind of want, and it's a Sunday tomorrow, I kind of want like brunch food while I watch the Women's World Cup. I haven't decided what I'm going to drink yet, but you know, kind of brunchy stuff. Maybe, maybe I'll drink the Prosecco, even though I really should be drinking like American sparkling, like maybe some Gruet. And forget the mimosa, just drink, just drink the wine. Also, we don't really have any orange juice in the house. I have some cranberry juice. That might, maybe I'll try that. Anyway, I mean, it smells good, but it's not like overwhelming, but it's definitely more of a fruit forward. I was kind of expecting since it's old world Syrah, more of that pepper and meaty stuff, but maybe the Grenache and the um, uh, Carignan is adding some of the fruit, but let's just taste it. There's the earthiness. Um, it's still got that that fruit, but now I get like tobacco. I get cedar box. I get earthiness. Um, I'm getting, I still get like the blueberry pancakes, which is crazy. Um, I'm still getting that blueberry pancakes and like a like little bit of maple syrup, but it's not sweet. It's like I get more like the, the pancake and like a hint of blueberry. I don't know, I feel like we're saying that because I feel like I'm disrespecting the wine. And I have no idea what the tasting notes actually say, but um, I really like the wine. Let's put it that way. But there's a bitterness to it. I like that. I like this bitterness to it. Um, that blueberry pancake is really just a kind of an underlying thing. It's really more uh, earth driven, mineral driven, um, not a whole lot of spice. The alcohol is actually very well contained. Um, I, I, I kind of get it, but not a whole lot. Um, let's see what the alcohol is on it. I mean, it's 14.5 alcohol. I mean, it's there, but it's not like, ooh, you can taste it or feel it. Um, it it's kind of barky, woody. Um, not a lot of oak spices, oak flavoring to it because it only sees very little like new oak on it, or I actually don't even think it's new oak, it's just very little oak treatment. Um, and it says it's large oak barrel, so we're talking a lot, you know, um, not a, uh, it, the oak doesn't do as much influence, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but more like, the, like a black, fruit like under ripe somewhat bitter like blackberry like like you taste like the the actual like skin of the berries not really the fruit you know how sometimes like a blackberry when you eat a fresh blackberry it can be kind of bitter um you get kind of that grittiness of the actual of the fruit The wine's opening up a little bit more. Uh, the fruit's coming through a little bit more. The tannin's starting to kind of, kind of come through a little bit more. Um, basically got some oxygen in, in it. Um, but even like on, on the nose, there was a touch of smoke. There's also a little smokiness to it. So it's really getting more complex as it as it opens up. I don't have a lot of wine left in there. We're gonna, we're gonna throw some more wine in there just because it's like freaking delicious and I can. Um, yeah, I don't want to do too much. <clears throat> but anyway, um, we'll just swirl, swirl a lot just to really aerate it. I have some products I'm going to try out. Uh, I was told to, to this, uh, I, I got some products to try out. I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet as a, as a review.
you had the pepper starting to come through more in the retronasal. It's not really on the initial like palate. It's like afterwards you breathe through your not breathe through your nose. Um, it's got the pepper in there, like the really like the black, like really fine grain black pepper. Um, not like peppercorn, which I do get from Syrah a lot of times. Not quite as meaty, but there's like that hint of like like a like a sausage type of thing or like a dried cured meat. That whole blueberry pancake thing is like gone now. It was like the initial like pour on it. Anyway, I like the wine. It, it ticks a lot of boxes for me what I like out of wine. And um, 20 bucks, I think it's fairly priced. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode. Click the links below to friend me up. Click the links below uh, to find more about the wine. Hit the donate button over there and we'll see everyone again next time.